Okay, this is an audio recording, and this is uh, where I'm going to be bringing in Adronis in a trance-like state. And the question I have for Adronis is that from my own angels, I've received that the modern human, the human that God had introduced to the earth, happened approximately 164,000 years ago. Now again, there is a lot of talk in regards to humanity descending from the Homo sapien, the Anderthal species, or perhaps other forms of Neanderthals in that way. And again, it doesn't feel like that's quite the case. <clears throat> and so I just wanted to uh, connect with Adronis just to share some insight pertaining to man coming upon the earth and perhaps any possible differentiation relating to uh, the Homo sapien species or Homo erectus, etc., as it compares to the idea of modern man. So I will go ahead and bring Adronis in and uh, go into this trance-like state to bring information through. Here we go. <clears throat> we are here at this time, and we thank you for this interaction. We will speak on the idea of modern man coming upon the earth. It is for you to know that the idea of modern man succeeds the lineages termed by your scientists relating to that of Neanderthals, and their own subspecies. It is for you to understand that the human race and its orientation of being slightly differed from that of what you would term as your common Neanderthal species. Modern man was not, shall we say, simplistic in its own design. Modern man was indeed a thinker. The idea of the cultivation of tools was more deeply advanced than the other subspecies of the Neanderthal races. The idea of man being a problem solver, even with man's own motor skills, differed from the idea of the Neanderthal impression, as termed by your theory of evolution. One must understand that the differentiation of characteristics pertaining to other species is not through that of a natural biological evolution, but through the aspect of natural engineering. When you are looking at different forms of Neanderthal-like species, such as Homo sapien or Homo erectus, etc., you will discover that there are different types. That there may be differentiations pertaining to the impression of the skull or the body, as well as the making of the tools, as well as, again, different characteristics that may have related to those species. This has nothing to do with the idea of them coming from, shall we say, natural evolution, but through the idea of engineering. When God brought forward the human race upon the planet, it was an entirely different species that was not derived from the ancestry of what you would term as Neanderthal. Neanderthal was a different type of humanoid species created by other creator gods. The idea of the human being far surpassed much of what the Neanderthal species could accomplish. And upon Humanity's reign upon the planet, approximately 
164,000 years ago. This was indeed the time to where the angels bowed in reverence to men. For it was not a Neanderthal that they were bowing in reverence to. It was not Homo sapien or Homo erectus that the angels were bowing in reverence to. It was the Hugh man, the God man, that they were bowing in reverence to. We would say that your modern man has nothing to do with an evolutionary descendants as theorized by your modern scientists. Humankind was an entirely different species. And it was this original, primordial version of humankind to which God unveiled upon the planet, to which the angels themselves bowed in reverence. For in later times, there were other creator gods, we will say, farm races that came upon the earth and wanted to contribute their genetic stock to the original primordial man. Some were invited and permitted to do this, and later on down the road, some again were not permitted and were in violation of this. And this again eventually culminated into what you would know as the integration of the 22 different genetic species of extraterrestrial that added together into the genome of the human being. Not through Neanderthals, not through Homo erectus or Homo sapien, but through the idea of the human race. We are telling you that you are human being, that you are modern man. Not Homo sapien, not Homo erectus. Even your own scientists were not able to discover the appropriate shall we say, universal model pertaining to that of a Homo sapien. They were always finding different types of Neanderthal species and subspecies. And they were not able to fully integrate a universal model as it relates to the Homo sapien. We would say that your species is not Homo sapien. That again is what has been, shall we say, diversified and believed and branded upon your species is believing that human beings are homo sapiens. We are saying you are not homo sapiens. You are human. You are modern man. The greatest way we could put it is being homo human. And as being homo human, you have, again, greater tendencies than to the quote-unquote relatives that represented the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals, in that sense, again, represented a different design. There certainly is shared characteristics associated with DNA, but it is not, again, the same species. Man evolved further. And the idea of the Neanderthals, again, eventually perished off many thousands of years ago. But man, again, in its own state of resilience, continued through its problem-solving ability, through its ability to survive, through its ability to flourish, and through its ability to be the focal point for many other civilizations to contribute their genetics to add to the intelligence overall relating to humanity. That is what human beings mean to us. We thank you for this interaction, and we will now conclude. Goodbye for now.